Hello friends, today I'm going to talk about humility. You know, we live in a world where it seems like everyone is desperate to be heard. Everyone is chasing the spotlight, waiting to prove how much better than everyone they are. And here we have enough examples of stupidity. Let them eat cake. This is the 2024 Met Gala red carpet. Kim Kardashian is here, also Lana Del Rey, Sean McGeer, we are all here together. But what if I told you there is a different way? A way that isn't about being the loudest or most powerful, but instead a way of being humble. I want to share with you something that has been waiting on my heart lately. Something that's not easy to talk about in today's world, and that's humility. But not just any humility, the kind of humility that Jesus taught us. The kind that looks upside down to the rest of the world, but is actually the most powerful attribute we can have. So let me take you back to one of the most powerful moments in Jesus' life. See if you can picture this. Actually, try to picture it. It is the night before Jesus' crucifixion. And he gathers with his disciples in an upper room to share the Passover meal. The atmosphere is solemn, filled with the weight of impending events. The disciples are likely unaware of the gravity of what is about to unfold. But Jesus, fully conscious of his approaching suffering, decides to deliver one final, deeply meaningful lesson on humility and love. During the meal, Jesus proceeds to kneel down and start washing their feet. Now remember, this is God, the creator of everything. And there he was, doing the job of a servant. That's wild, right? Most of us would think that if we had his power, we'd be the ones being served. But Jesus flipped it around, and it makes you think, what would that look like today? Imagine if, instead of bossing people around at work, you start serving them. Maybe you're a manager, a director, or even a CEO. What if, instead of demanding respect, you offered kindness and service? That's what Jesus showed us. Real greatness isn't about being in charge. It's about serving others. Remember what he said? And whoever of you will be the chiefest, shall be servant of all. That's the heart of humility. It's not about lowering yourself, but choosing to lift others up, no matter where you are in life. Now, let's talk about one of the hardest things to do, keeping humble when people are coming at you. Jesus was standing before Pilate while everyone was accusing him. People were shouting lies, mocking him, spitting in his face. And what did he do? He stayed silent. No defense, no anger, no response. He didn't feel the need to prove himself. Why? Because he knew who he was. Fast forwarding to today. How often do we get caught in arguments, whether it's online, in person, and we feel like we have to have the last word? But Jesus showed us another way. Sometimes being humble means choosing to remain silent and trusting that God sees the truth. In 2020, I had just returned to Romania when the pandemic hit. In that month alone, I lost all my planned filming contracts for events and companies. In the face of such uncertainty, I got scared and got a job to cover my bills for the coming months. Since I had a lot of experience in customer service, I found a position at the local supermarket in Oradia. It lasted all but a month there, after seeing how poorly managers and supervisors treated their employees. They would swear at us, accuse us of stealing, and if we wanted to keep our jobs, they even made us pay for missing cigarettes. It didn't affect me too much at first, but one night after a restocking shift, I felt like I was about to explode from all the injustice going on. The last drop was when I accidentally broke a couple of jars of chopped vegetables. I apologized to my shift supervisor, explaining I was really tired and I would pay for the jars the next morning. The supervisor assured me there was no need to pay, saying mistakes like this happen often 
in the store and no one has to pay. <sighs> However, as soon as our shift ended, the same supervisor went straight to the manager and reported I hadn't paid for the broken jars. I could feel my face turning red. Following my manager's appreciative comments about my work, the supervisor seemed more worried about me taking her job than just doing it well. And that's when I decided I needed to leave that toxic environment for good. So I told my manager it was my last shift. I paid for the jars and went home, breathing heavily from the frustration. Now, as a filmmaker, I was planning my next move. I considered going back the next day with hidden cameras to capture the manager shouting at employees, insulting them and forcing them to pay for items like cigarettes that weren't actually missing. I planned to sell the footage to a TV news station. I was so ready to do it. But when I got home and prayed, the Holy Spirit urged me not to waste my time on this, but instead to leave the situation in God's hands. It was incredibly difficult because I was so angry. But in the end, I chose to let it go. I didn't know what happened to them, but since I let go of my revenge plan, all my frustrations lifted. This experience taught me a valuable lesson in humility. Even when we feel justified in exposing wrongdoing or seeking revenge, sometimes the humble path is to trust that justice will be served in ways beyond our control. Humility is not about letting others mistreat us, but about surrendering our pride and acknowledging that we do not need to fight every battle. As the Bible teaches in Proverbs chapter 15 verse 1, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. So in choosing to leave the matter in God's hands, I found peace instead of prolonging the anger and conflict. True humility comes from trusting that in the end, righteousness and justice will prevail without needing to seek our own revenge. There's a powerful verse in Isaiah that states, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. It's tough, but when you know your identity in Christ, you don't need to fight every battle with words. Sometimes the most powerful thing you can do is walk away, pray, and let God handle it. Now, if you want to see what real humility looks like under pressure, you've got to look at Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He knew he was on his way to the cross. He knew the path, the suffering, the weight of the world's sins was about to be on his shoulders. And he prayed, not my will, but thine be done. Can you imagine that? It wasn't just about him saying, I'm going to do this because I have to. It was him surrendering his will completely. And that's what humility is. It's surrender. It's saying, God, I trust your plan more than I trust my own desires. Now, think about your own life. Maybe you're facing a decision right now. One that doesn't make sense on paper. Or maybe you're being asked to give up something you really want. Or take a path that feels uncertain. But real humility is trusting that God's plan is better than anything we could dream up for ourselves. Here's the promise. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he might exalt you in due time. Humility might look like a loss at first, but in the end, it always leads us to something greater. And here's the beautiful part. Jesus' humility didn't end on the cross. It ended with his resurrection. He endured the ultimate humiliation, but he came out victorious, bringing hope, salvation, and life for all of us. And that's the power of humility, my friends. It's not about staying under someone's thumb forever. It's about trusting that when you humble yourself, God will lift you up in ways you never imagined. It might not look like what the world considers as success, but in God's kingdom, it's everything. Remember what Jesus said, 
for whosoever exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. His personal invitation to us to live like Jesus did, to be humble in a world that's obsessed with being seen and praised, to choose service over status, silence over fighting for attention, surrender over control. Because when we do, God promises that he'll take care of the rest. So what does this mean for you today? Maybe it means listening more than speaking. Maybe it means serving someone less fortunate than you. Or maybe it's trusting God with that decision you've been struggling with. Whatever it is, Jesus' life shows us that humility isn't just a nice idea is the most powerful way to live. So my friends, if this message spoke to you, don't forget to subscribe, like and share it with someone who might need encouragement today. Let's brighten this world by showing humility in the way Jesus taught us. God bless you.